let the world know that George has rukad me. <laughs> he said he is not my friend. <laughs> ah. Anyway, they said many shall despise you on account of the gospel. I just didn't count George among the many. <laughs> ah. Sir, so, um, last two weeks we have dealt with uh, <laughs> bombshell. <laughs> Can hear myself laugh. Um, with with um, two important um, uh, discussions around uh, um, heaven and around the, the the new earth. Right now, I don't know whether there are questions, comments. Uh, any output from the discussions held there before before we go into to today eh? see that's why I'm asking comments silence Karo is shaking her head she's like when chokoza enough achana mimi but I have a question. I have a very basic question. Why is it important to know? Why is it important that we journey so deeply into scripture as to uh, to use the words that were used on a friend of ours that that's just too much. You know, you are now overstudying scripture. Right? Why is it important? Why is it critical? Why is it important for us to study scripture the way we have for so long? Yes, no, it's a, it's yeah. Uh, In studying truth, destinations are defined. And destinations determine how you journey. Interesting. Uh -huh. Why is it important to study? I'll read for you a scripture in Proverbs that perhaps should help us um, journey correctly. Uh, And, and this is one of my most f uh, most favorite proverbs. It's in Proverbs 25 too. And I want us to start there so that we understand what, what it is that we need to do and understand. Okay? Chelsea Tukosa? Tukosa? <laughs> it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But the glory of kings is to search out a thing. This statement is quite not as well known, of course, as John 3.16. But I'm sure in your Christian walk, if you've been a Christian for more than five days, you've heard this thing, that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. Now, this, this particular scripture speaks of a few things that do not make sense. One, the glory of a king is well known. Kwanza in Kenya. It is a motorcade, it's leaving its state house, it's being saluted by everybody and being cons called His Excellency by all and sundry, correct? This is what we define glory. Uh, if you look at the glory of a, of a musician, for example, uh, the flashy car, the flashy lifestyle and things like that. But God defines His glory, right? When you say you've seen the glory of God, what does he define glory as? This one defines his glory as hiding, concealing a matter. 
And then he says, it is the glory of kings to search it out. Meaning that God is glorified when matters are concealed. Kings are glorified when they search out a matter. So then we know who God is. Question is who is the king? Now, of course, this is a writing of Solomon or Solomon's uh, uh, compatriots. So you would imagine that the ruler of a land, the more he searches a thing out, the more he seeks understanding of a thing, the more glorified he is. Now, a few hundred years ago, this was quite obvious. Uh, the glory of the British monarch was to search out the nations and, and to uh, learn of new lands and new opportunities. And, and uh, true, it brought them a lot of wealth and glory, correct? In, in fact, in our study, in our modern study of history, when we look at the, the, the Romans, the Greeks, uh, the Babylonians, they are all people who ventured outside their borders to find new realities, correct? Uh, and, and I'm just taking a physical approach before I take a spiritual one. Uh, if you look at the greatest nations today on earth, they're the ones who are planning to go to the moon, they're planning to go to Mars, they're exploring space, they're exploring science, they're, they're searching out quite literally, the mysteries, not just of earth, but also of the universe. Uh, they, they sponsored telescopes and rocket ships and all manner of things to search out things, correct? Now, funnily enough, and, and, and let me give a commentary, uh, uh, Kenya uh, invests less than 0.5% of its budget on research. In every form of research you can imagine, less than 0.5% percent of our budget uh, not very kingly if you ask me so it is clear in the natural that states leadership that searches out facts in the physical dimension of things then have great honor right uh, in fact businesses that also do research um, succeed that 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 if you um uh, looked at any company that researches whether it is how to satisfy customers or how to make their product better they tend to succeed correct now this is in the natural but god says that we are a royal priesthood right and if we were to take that this is the Bible and it speaks to itself and to its captive audience, that is us, then the kings that God is speaking about are kings that search out a matter. Right? Now, what then is the dynamic that you as someone who is believing in Christ, and, and this is where the difference really hits the road, I remember my crusade experience of salvation. It was believe in Jesus, don't sin, and you will go to heaven. That was the basic teaching, correct? And, and the result of that was that no matter what I went through, I had a destination called heaven, and all I needed to do was be nice, and I'll get there. Cindy. Not once was I told that there are hidden things in Scripture that I need to find. Uh, in, in fact, the far they went is they told me to read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. Then they went, if you want to grow. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and then your understanding was that if you were a decent Christian, then you would dedicate a certain number of days 
to read your Bible. And, and I wish I had a physical Bible. I can't tell you the number of times in high school I would close my eyes. And the Lord destroyed Jerusalem. <laughs> and Judas hung himself. <laughs> and you know, when you read your Bible that way, you, you are trying uh, to find, um, usually when I did that, I was trying to find an answer. Will I pass my exams or not? <laughs> Jerusalem <laughs> shall be destroyed. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so you, you are trying to give magical powers to a logos text. <laughs> Let me repeat. You're trying to give magical powers to a static statement. Let me explain what I mean by static. The Bible, the written word of God, is a concealment. It is not a an obvious book. In fact, it is not a literal book. Okay? <laughs> uh, if you take certain things in the Bible literally, you will be a bit lost. Like God got up and prepared himself for war. Or heaven is his throne. So, if God has buttocks, then they rest on heaven. Right? If you take certain things literally, you are in trouble. If you take, for example, that you are made in the image of God, and therefore God has a hand with five fingers, he has feet, he has... That's not true, because God is spirit. So, the image of God we are to receive is a spiritual image. So, the, the, the entirety of what is spoken in scripture is understood by the circumcision of our hearts. There, there needs to be a revelatory experience for you to understand what is plainly written. And therefore to attribute magical powers to the physical word of the scriptures you land in trouble. I'll give you an example historians have probably read the Bible more carefully and more intricately than you. And yet they did not find salvation or hope for resurrection from that same book which you read and you find revelation. The reason for that is simple. The Bible was not written as an academic exercise. Yeah, if you want to know what I'm saying is true, look at the many seemingly, not seemingly, contradictory accounts of the birth of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the reigns of different kings, their ages, and things like that in Chronicles versus Kings. Right? You find that whatever is written is written the way, and, and this will offend a lot of people, uh, human beings would write. If you ask any detective and you told Hez and Caro, who have witnessed this class, for example, if you told them to write a statement, to write an account of what happened, and you asked them without looking, in fact, let me do that example now. Please do not look straight at me. I have a question. What color of shirt is George wearing today? Uh, red. red. What color of shirt you've just seen him? Are you a last class? Don't, don't look behind. What color of shirt is George wearing? Jeans bluish? Light blue? Blue? Dark blue? Uh, uh -huh. Blue. So, there is blue, dark blue, jeans blue, and red. Mtuako of course, the red. <laughs> but you see, 
there was jeans blue, there was light blue, and there was dark blue, and there was blue. And we are sitting in a room where we've all experienced George in our lives hardly, hardly 30 minutes ago. And yet the accounts we give, if a policeman sat and asked one of us whether they were here, you'd be like, eh, the one who saw red, so wrong. But he didn't see wrong because the person seated next to George is in red. You see, so the, the proof, weirdly, that what is being recorded in the Bible is true is actual, actually those interesting stories that are told, right? Look at Jomo Kenyatta. He lived hardly um, 60 years ago. But the stories that are told about him vary ever so slightly with every telling, okay? But that tells you and qualifies one thing for you. That what is written in the Bible is not the word of God. Because the word of God is a person. He is called Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And this word became flesh. Now what am I trying to separate for you? I am not saying that the Bible is not useful. I have just told you that its inherent flaws and, and issues that people find with it. And for those who are wondering so that you can go research and not um, insult me, is go research the birth of Jesus in Matthew, Luke, and John. Go research the death of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You will find that there are discrepancies who went to the, uh, uh, to the uh, tomb first? Who did what? The death of Judas. How Jesus entered. The death of Judas has two stories. One, he hung himself. Two, he bought a piece of land and his stomach uh, flew open. There, there are so many examples of this. Now, all of this, to me, are not an issue. Because John 1 1 tells me about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, here's the problem with that definition. The problem with that definition is then Hindus have sacred scriptures, right? The Jews have sacred scriptures. We don't. How do I know that we don't? How? Where should I put it? Huh? On the side. Eh? How do we know we don't? How many books of Jesus have you read? In fact, the only writing of Jesus was on sand next to a woman being convicted. Why do you think that Jesus did not write these things down? Okay, let me ask you. If you are starting a new religion, what would be the most important thing to do? Yes, Muhammad got it right. <laughs> Right? That you write your constitution, your, your founding document, that 1,400 years later, people are reading your document and saying, This is the absolute word of God. In, in fact, <coughs> the Mormons with John Smith, he wrote a book hardly 200 years ago. The Mormons have a book. Now, how scripture comes to us, and let me give you a bit of history so that you understand. How scripture comes to us is first we inherit from the Jewish traditions, part of the Jewish tradition. We inherit the first five books, part of which are uh, the direct words of God in the Ten Commandments that he gave in tablet form to Moses, which he 
conveniently broke then he had to go and write it out himself and then you find the laws as and the stories as compiled in the first five books right then we chose certain prophets and poems and one love poem <laughs> songs of solomon and we decided that this is the old testament there's nothing wrong with it i'm not saying there's anything wrong with it and then the disciples after jesus had died and they had gone around teaching for a while there began to be issues now here's the most interesting thing the letters of paul were written before the gospels yes the reason being that they were being written in response to problems that were happening. So Paul went to Thessalonica and he thought when he left, there were issues that were being there. Mostly it was whether people should be circumcised or not, whether people should eat meat sacrifice to idols or not those kind of things that we ask today whether we should listen to secular music or not those kind of things and paul writes in response to those problems he was not writing a bible in fact when he writes to them he writes to them as paul the same way a, a bishop could write a, a letter in fact those letters is like saying a sermon is scripture. Okay? Now, after the destruction of the temple, though there is a very slim minority that say it was before, after these letters had been written, people felt the need because many of the original disciples were either dead were advanced in age, were in jail, or were soon going to die, they decided to write down what they had had as a testimony about Christ. Now, what happens is very interesting. If you read the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you realize that they all copy from Mark and then add their own details. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That's why they're called the Synoptic Gospels. Why? Because if you read, you, have you ever thought why we've got four versions of the same story? Why we would have four people writing the same story? The reason that is, is because Mark, when he wrote, Matthew was like, wait a minute, there are a few details missing I will add. And the same thing to Dr. Luke. Right? John's gospel is probably one of the most fantastic gospels because it explores the godhood of Christ. Right? It, it, it goes much, begins, in fact, with great detail as to the Godhood of Jesus Christ. Right? The rest do not. Right? Now, when you understand this, it brings into perspective that what was being written was not the Word of God because they, you cannot write Jesus into a book or false okay now what we have in scripture is keys vifunguo to unlock the mystery that is christ are we together now i don't know whether i have the english to describe this christ is not taught he is not 
scientifically analyzed he is revealed the revelation of him is critical why is it critical in his life ministry people called him rabbi people called him prophet people called him elijah right they all missed him until peter says you are the christ the chosen one of god now can jesus simply be a teacher yes he can because anyone will tell you the virtues that jesus espouses whether you are an atheist a buddhist a hindu whatever the, the, the teachings of love and forgiveness and acceptance and healing of the sick and rebuilding of society and devotion to prayer and to mankind are universal lessons. Is there any religion that will say don't be generous? Any religion that will say let's not forgive? Any religion that will say let's not be kind to each other? Even the Masons teach this. Right? So there is a very rabbi basis of understanding christ true there is also a very prophetic way of understanding christ he correctly predicted the destruction of the temple at a time where no one could have seen or imagined or fathomed the temple could be destroyed so it perfectly predicted it right so was he a prophet yes was he a miracle worker yes but the messiah bit he himself says flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but by the spirit right so that means that god what he has done is he has concealed himself in scripture scripture is how god has hidden himself. His purpose to hide himself is not a new phenomenon. If we go to Genesis chapter 1, when God makes the heavens and the earth, the spirit is brooding over the waters. The waters are visible. Where is God? He describes himself as dwelling in inapproachable light. He describes himself that I cannot show myself to you lest you die. He has decided by his very nature to be hidden from the direct access of man that your physical eyes cannot fathom him, him your physical senses cannot sense him you cannot touch him, you cannot taste him, you cannot smell him you don't feel him. Right? This God has decided on purpose that even when the disciples ask Jesus, can we meet the Father? Jesus says, you have seen me, therefore you have seen the Father. The, 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 that's not what they asked. Right? It's like my son coming here and saying, listen, I really look like my dad. I talk like my dad. So you've met my dad. Right? I'm not saying Jesus is wrong. I will explain what it means. But again, Jesus is speaking about the nature of God as a concealed construct. Now, this concealed construct of God is critical. Why is it critical? It is critical because... Every being that has direct access to God has no option than to believe in his existence. It says even the very demons believe. Demons do not doubt God exists. They do not go like God is not there. Why? Because they, do, they dwell in a realm within which God is visibly tangibly present but on the earth he has chosen to dwell in an approachable light 
In fact, Christ continues to explain it this way. He says you must seek in order to find. You must knock persistently for the door for you to be opened. Right? That means from the beginning, God who decided to dwell in the deep, decided to dwell in an, in an in unapproachable light, has desired in his heart from the beginning that those who find him are those who seek him and seek him in spirit and truth. Seek him in spirit and truth. Now, question, who is spirit, who is truth? We know the Holy Spirit. But who is truth? I am the way, the truth, and the... So God is always found by seeking him in spirit and in Christ. God cannot be found. No one comes to the Father except through Christ. So God cannot be found in a worship service. God cannot be found by singing. You shall seek me and you will find me if you seek me in spirit and in. He is not found in song. He is not found in feeling. He is not found by, by, by mere looking at scripture. No. He is found by what? The conjecture of speaking, seeking in spirit and in truth. Correct? Now let's be very clear because I'm still digging foundations around Genesis because we need to understand. Therefore, the revelation of God comes when water and word is present. Correct? Spirit and word. Spirit and born of the water, the spirit and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. You cannot experience God without the bath in the water and the bath in the spirit. So let us diagnose a disease. There's a disease called born of the spirit without any word. Here's what happens. Sunguruka, sumbuka, sumbuka, toka, ingia, karate, suju what? Why? Those are people who want to experience the spiritual without being grounded in the word without being grounded in truth now it's a dangerous thing because john says and he says test every spirit right so the question is test it with what your tongue poisonous spirit edible spirit how do you test every spirit Test tube, litmus paper, shake, blue acidic spirit, <laughs> blue, sorry, basic spirit, red acidic spirit. How do you test the spirit? Yeah? Mint flavor spirit. <laughs> How do you test the spirit? Interestingly, Moses gave us many examples. He said, if a prophet rises among you, a prophet, and everything he tells you comes to pass. So uh, let me explain. If a prophet shows up and he says, tomorrow your shoe shall disappear from your feet. And tomorrow you wake up, you wear your shoes, and then they mysteriously disappear. God forbid. <laughs> if that prophet predicts a thing and it happens, and there are many predictions. Uh, let me in fact make it global. 
If a prophet shows up and tells you it will rain tomorrow, uh, a minister will resign, uh, you will be named PS, and uh, what else? Uh, yes, and so and so will win an election. In fact, that's a favorite one. And that prophecy comes to pass. But he teaches you to go contrary to the word I have given you, you shall not follow him. Christians, what they had is a prophet rises up and any of his prophecies comes true. You shall follow him to the grave. What is the test of the spirit? The test of the Spirit is this. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will take that which is mine. He will not even speak of himself. And bring it to you. He, he, he continues to say that the Holy Spirit will remind you what I have taught you. Correct? So the check of the Spirit is the truth. That's why you cannot have spirit and no truth. Because at the end of the day, if you have only spirit and no truth, you will be deceived. Because one of the greatest tricks that the devil is able to play is to show himself what? As an angel of light. I used to imagine that he shows up where is that music? Ah, and there's light and there's a hello and he looks full of light. No, let's read it co correctly. As a messenger of the truth. As a messenger of the truth. And this is the problem. The devil's message is quite attractive. It is very articulate. The message of the enemy is always very simple. It's called, you are in pain, save yourself. <laughs> That's the most basic scripture. That there is better and you can save yourself. If you want a Christian to backslide, make him feel that his life in Christ is harder than his life out there. And he desires his life out there. If you want a Christian to leave Christ, show him that there is pleasure and pleasure indeed out there more than there is in Christ. If you want a Christian to leave the faith, to shipwreck their faith, tell them to pursue Mammon. And as Paul says to Timothy, many will shipwreck their faith. Right? But the message when it comes, listen, I'll, I'll give you one of the best, most demonic messages. Best, most demonic messages. You know what it was? There was a video that did rounds called The Secret. Hmm? Now, did that sound like a sweet gospel? That all you need to do is put positivity out there, right? And then the universe working will by itself will bring you good things. And now every status on I see nowadays on social media is manifesting. I am manifesting my Mercedes Benz. I am manifesting my car. I am manifesting my house. My friend, according to which scripture? It is the same doctrine, polished, turned around. Now instead of the secret, it's called manifesting. I, I am manifesting my, 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 my dreams. Bang. Right? Now, the problem here is many people have a surface interaction 
with the truth. What do I mean? They open scripture and they have a surface interaction with it. What is a surface interaction? You read uh, Christ say, uh, give me one of the promises of Christ. Uh, yes. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Ukasoma apo, and you believed. Bwana sifu sana. Yeah? So now, you, you read. You didn't read the satanic Bible. You did not read the book of Mammon. You, you read the Bible. And it said, come to me, all you who labor, and I will give you. Now, because you labor and are heavy laden, you decide that since you came to Christ, you should have. But the next day when you wake up, you realize, if I don't go labor and be heavy laden, I shall sleep hungry. Correct? But also, you realize that your reading of that scripture A was incomplete. Because the second part says what? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Christ is telling you that rest is a different burden, a different yoke. Rest is not the cessation of work. To, 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 to uh, quote a, a conversation I was having just before class. To take the English or contemporary use of words and insert them in the Bible will mislead you. For example, when it says God rested from all his work, right? It implies, because if you take it from your experience, if I need to rest, then I am tired. Or who rests when they are not tired? So, if you take the term rest applied to God the way it applies today, you would imagine that God needed to rest because making light and animals and things is very hard work. Right? Yeah? Okay. But you land into trouble when Jesus says, my father is always working. So when did he rest if he's always working? And if God is always working, always working, when does he rest? So the term rest, therefore, does not have the same English and contemporary meaning that I use. Therefore, there is a balance. When the Spirit comes and tells me, today is the day of rest, if my brain cannot understand what rest means, then I will take a holiday. Senior. But the rest the Bible is talking about is it is time to cease from the labors of Adam to enter into the labors of Christ. It is uh, meaning that it is time to move from the labor of eating to the labor of purpose. Equally, you cannot understand that there is rest in God and receive that rest without meeting the person of the Spirit. Okay, let me show you. You remember the eunuch? He was reading the book of Isaiah, right? Seeking understanding, right? What did he need to receive? He needed to receive faith because Philip came and taught him and then he was filled by the Holy Ghost. Correct? Because if you have knowledge and revelation and do not walk in the Spirit, you cannot receive the salvation promised by both. So you cannot make sense. If you have revelation and you do not walk by the Spirit, 
that knowledge of revelation cannot save you. At present. <laughs> you see, here's the biggest issue. We have talked about the spiritual uh, focused mystic person. They will be misled because the okay, let me let me show you the misleadings in the Bible. When Ab was, up, was about to be destroyed, correct? There were prophets of who? Of God. Who were called. Right? And when the prophets of God were called, they spoke prophecies. And they all agreed. The majority, 30 something, I, I think it was. Agreed that Ahab would be successful in war. Sindio? Only one prophet, only one had the truth from God. Me, I want you, I want it to bother you for one minute. You can imagine you are a prophet of God. You have had many prophecies that God has given you. But he decides, God decides to send a lying spirit into you to lie to Ahab. <laughs> How would you know? You know, it is easy to read these stories and not put yourself in that. If, if, if God decides to lie to you and to lie through you, guys, am I, am I misquoting scripture? We're okay. Now, I, I want you to understand and I want you to question if God allowed a lying spirit to enter you, would you be on the side of Micaiah who knew the whole story or would you prophesy a lie? Notice the Bible does not say these prophets were sinners. The Bible does not say these guys were particularly bad people. In fact, their title is prophet. I just want you to understand. So, question, if, if a lying spirit is permitted... Would you know? Ama, will you hold a small TV and say, I receive, or will you be the goalkeeper? A World Cup season, yes. The goalkeeper. <laughs> what? Where? Where? Let's ask. If God sent a lying spirit would you know would you know that this is a lying spirit would you know and therefore question how many churches operate under a lying spirit and how do you know and, and, and please let us define the lie what was the lie you shall succeed. This is your year of double portion. This is your year of increase. This is your week of harvest. Today the Lord is opening doors for you. Thou, that was the message of the lying spirit. My friend, if a spirit showed up and told you you'll have a Mercedes Benz tomorrow, how would you tell? I receive big t we go about small TV. Which one? Mercedes <laughs> size, Mercedes. So goalkeeper and do ishike vizuri. Una I receive. I receive. I give any you to let you have Nissan match. But, 
my question is because I, I, I want to unlock something in our understanding and how to access God. I want to know which no seriously, if if you watch TV and, and, and all these preachers, God bless them, who always have you are receiving it, you are here. Akuna there is no prophet nowadays who wakes up in December thirty first, twenty twenty two to say by the way, twenty twenty-three katomana. <laughs> you know. Eh? You know, I mean so question how do you know that this is a lie? In fact, some of you do not believe that God would ever promise you a Mercedes and it is a lie. You see, yes, yes. Eh? Yes. But the better deception, you, no, there is no con man who tells you, out upon an That's not a very good con. <laughs> you see, what did God intend to do? God intended to destroy Ahab. Okay. You know, kuna vitu kwa Bible. Again, if you read them on the surface, you are lost. But I'm dealing with the spirituality side of things. Me, my question to you, would you know? When you stand in a church, online, whatever, and the preacher does, I feel it in my soul. I feel it in my spirit. 2023. I said 2023. When he begins to do that dance, do you know? Do you know when 2023 is going to be the year like Jesus told Peter, the devil has asked to swift you like wheat. Would you know? Because there is a problem. We need to understand that God is always sought. You seek him and you find him. When you stumble upon him, eh, watch out. Yeah, people will argue, but people have stumbled upon God. Let's let's look at it. Let's look at Saul. Later to be known as Paul. When he met God and he was blind. What happened to him afterwards? He was told, You've been persecuting me. Lord, who are you that have been persecuting? I am Christ. Go into the city. You will be told what to do. He went to study. It is only the modern church that you show up in church. No seeking. You are drinking the whole night. You show up. God has a big TV for you. Right? You receive. Hey, careful. Because God is not found unless spirit, and I'm using this as truth, combine together to give you revelation. So be careful when you have a spiritual experience without an equal truth experience. They go together. Hey, should I repeat? Be careful when you have a spiritual experience without a truth experience. In other words, the revelation of God's word should accompany a movement of the spirit. How do you know? How would the prophets have known that they have a lying spirit? Ah, 
But there was a history of more than seven years, at least, of judgments against Ahab. Remember, this is happening after Elijah had closed the heavens. After judgment had been pronounced on Ahab. So how can that judgment have been pronounced and you are a prophet of God and the word comes, he will prosper how? The guy who just killed Naboth? The guy who's killed the prophets of the Lord? So you, how does that come? You, you, you have a brother who had died. Then you show up and your mind tells you that the same God who had judged the country for seven years, who had used Elijah to prophesy, to kill the prophets of all of these things, right? Then you in your mind, that this I have had must be true. How could they have known it's not true the, if they had gone back to the word? One, what did Moses say about a king who worships other gods? They knew. What did Moses say about a man who kills another to take his vineyard? What did Moses say about one who kills the prophets of God? So it is obvious that these prophets, the reason they could accept the lying spirit and they could be used to lie is because they had no foundation in truth. Hey, are we together? Am I making sense? So whenever you find yourself, listen, I used to be here. I used to be in this state where my pursuit of God was very emotional. Unajua ka mixtape, ka gospel music. Kwanga na ka mixtape. Kwanza, there used to be like two, three songs. Yani nilikuwa na sema nikichaza hizo songs. I'm in the presence like, Right? Now, the problem was I was seeking an experience with God without seeking a revelation from God. This experience addiction is dangerous. Ah, I'll tell you how dangerous it is. First, it makes the presence of God in your life temporary. Eh. How temporary? They even write it on the poster. Come and experience God. So, until the date of the event, who will I be experiencing until then? It's like me writing a poster to my wife. January 20, 23. New Year's Eve. Come and experience Mark Bichachi. Mother God, then you're right. Because the correct definition is that I dwell in him and he dwells in me sometimes. All the time. So at what point will your singing usher me to the presence of God? At what point will your emotions usher you to your, the presence of God? Hey, you see, I must uproot weeds in our lives. You know, it says, and every hill shall be made low, and every valley shall be filled. And you see, it says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And I used to think, in my mind, that God has serious problems in his highway, it's coming, so he needs Akinasiche like engineers to blow up mountains, and things like that. But, let me give you, again, from surface to deep. 
this must always be the journey. What were mountains? They were places of worship. Okay? Yeah. We, we, you, we, 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 even in Kenya, Mount Elgon or Mount whatever, uh, the hills, all of those things were like, that's where Gai, Nyasai, Wele, and all of those gods we had, that's where they dwelled. High places, the Bible calls them. Now, a lot of the time, we always used to think, if you, if you read the Bible quickly, you think the high places were always places of Baal worship. No. Most high places were actually places of worshipping God. Reason being, going to Jerusalem, they felt was too far. There's a whole story of, of how they were judged for wrongly worshipping God. The only place for worship to God to this day is Zion. Except Zion has moved. Zion is a position. Now we're starting to teach another lesson. <laughs> so, the hills being lowered meant in the understanding of the people that God is no longer worshipped at some high point, at some high experience. Ah, you know what I mean. You know when the guitar is just right and, and the pianist is, is, is on point and the singer is doing it just right. Yeah, that's your come mountain. And then, uh -huh. pick up my coffee, kwa yesu, pick up my coffee. Pick up my coffee, kwa yesu, pick up my coffee. Hey, hey. That's, that's the time when, when you are uh, at the mountain. In fact, some people physically go up mountains to be physically closer to God. As though he does not feel all things. At the same time, there are valleys. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Right? What is the valley experience? When you seek God when you're in trouble. Right? That's the valley experience. Uh, we, we know that one. I, I like how there are people who are super Christian in the valleys. <laughs> the way, because the valley of missing your periods. Akimungu. <laughs> this, this time, izikikuja, mimi I will wash you. In fact, ata we are joint and dump. Right? <laughs> or the value of the hangover. Akimungu. I hangover ikisha. Sita ikunywa. But what does God desire? So that he may dwell with you. That there is no mountain in your life. There is no valley in your life. Whichever experience you are on earth, you are constantly relating with God. So, now, the way you relate with God is in revelation. It is not in experience. <laughs> okay, let me ask you a question. You remember Elijah in the cave? There was thunder, there was lightning, there was fire, there was all of those things. Question, who sent the thunder, who sent the lightning, who sent all of those things? God. But the person who sent the thunder was not in the thunder. He was not in the lightning. He was not in the fire. He, who sent them? God. He, is it possible that sometimes God is not in the thing that is mesmerizing your eyes and your senses? But where was he? In the still, small voice. What I'm trying to show you is if you continually have surface experiences with God, you're looking for an emotional high. You're looking for, for him the way a cocaine addict looks for that next hit. I promise you, not once, not twice, not thrice, you shall meet another angel who will pretend to be an angel of light. 
Am I making sense? You cannot seek God through experience. Experience is dangerous. I'll give you an example. And it's an example I've said many times and people miss it. When Moses was told to speak to the rock, he didn't speak to the rock. He hit the rock. Correct? And when he hit the rock, did water come out of it or not? Okay. If Mimi, I hit this rock, and water came out, belay all these cameras, to be very good for the ministry, right? Very good. But, was Moses praised for it? He was judged for it. So experience does not make doctrine. Because if that experience was right, then God would not judge him. Because see, the water came out. It came from who? God or the devil? Experiences are dangerous things. Oh, I was a preacher in a church and then this woman came. She said she serves the queen of the sea. I prayed for her and the queen of the sea left. Then you have a whole sermon series on queen of the sea. You're mad. First, here's the problem with interrogating demons. When they speak lies, they speak their native. Yeah. Let me show you how demons are weird. Let me can I make it a bit worse? The demons told Jesus, We are legion because we are men. Then they said, Do not punish us before the time. Send us into the swine. Right? Jesus sent them into the swine. Right? What did the swine immediately do? Jump into the water. Okay. Does that story make sense? Unless they were going to be submarine pigs. <laughs> now because if you don't want to be destroyed and you're given a body to occupy, I would expect that region to be tormented by a legion of mad pigs. But instead they rushed into the water. Why? <laughs> to, go to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to go to the queen of the sea. <laughs> yeah, some preacher will teach that. But the reason for that was much simpler than that. Do you know why, what it was? Read how the people of that region reacted. The pigs were their wealth. So the demons were setting up Jesus to be crucified. So when, when we read that story, we think, aha, Jesus was giving us an example. No, Jesus was giving us a warning. Spiritual experience without truth will always lead to deception. Even if you do it yourself in your bathroom. Ah. On this other side, there is the truther, the knower of things. Okay? Here's the thing. Can you come into knowledge of the things of God. Yes, you can. You just need to find a king who has sought out something and you listen. Right? But this truth has a very interesting dynamic. It says they have ears and they do not hear. Eyes that do not see. The problem was not that the people listening to Jesus or to Moses or to whoever did not hear the gospel. It does not even mean they did not understand. For 
a Jew, for a Hebrew, if you say I have had, it is equal to saying I have done. So, if the word says drink water, and I understand it means drink water, but I do not take the water and put it to my lips to drink it, I have not had. Should I repeat? If revelation comes to you and it says, okay, uh, go to master class, giving, an, actually, that would be very selfish of me. We use something different. Start a bakery. Let me use something practical, right? Now, if you hear start a bakery, you understand that a bakery is a place that uses baking powder, eggs, milk, and flour to produce sweet things. But you do not start the bakery. You have not heard truth. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm speaking to anybody really. Let me explain. The Bible says, when someone slaps your right cheek, give him your left cheek also. Right? Social media says, if someone slaps your right cheek, sue them, insult them, cut them off, separate yourself from negative energy. Right? Okay. When someone does that to you, and you decide to cut off your friendship. You may be in logical correctness. Right? Because logically you've hurt me. Why should I allow you around my space? I'm a Gemini. I'm an Aries. I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's so accurate, Bonnie. <laughs> you know, listen. When you do not obey what it says, what happens? Nothing, right? That's what you think. That's what you... Let me tell you what happens. Whoever hears these words of mine and does them is like a builder who built on the rock. But whoever hears these words of mine and does not do them, so it would have been better that you didn't. But because you've had, the house is built nonetheless. <laughs> Let me explain something to you so that to Elewane. There are those who build with gold, those who build with precious metals, and those who build with straw. Right? When the fire comes, it will destroy the one who built with. So please note that no matter what you do, you are building. See, that's the scripture. Because everyone has something that will be now, Jesus said that if you build by obedience to these words of mine, you'll be like a wise man who built on a rock. If you do not do these words of mine, you will have built on sand. Now, before the storm, the houses might even look the same. But the difference is when the storm comes, whatever you built will be destroyed. Now for a lot of us, you're like, what is the relevance of that? Now, Jesus did not say the storm comes at the end of the age, did he? He says when the storm 
when the when the phone rings yes eh. so now let me explain to you what happens first let's agree the storm happened to the obedient one and the disobedient one true or false when it came the obedient one's house stood the disobedient one's house fell apart hey what does that mean let me explain when you know truth and you don't practice it you will still build things businesses uh, relationships uh, literal houses right here's the problem if let's say you built a relationship on no forgiveness right a time will come when you are the one needing forgiveness but what have you built on so what will happen so you built on no forgiveness you too will not be yeah. you were told do not build in pride okay but you decided marketing and my brand and I'm a gemini <laughs> so you built on self your brand and then you make a video saying how you have a man for your rent for your fridge <laughs> when the test comes you fall am i making sense now that is truth part one but truth part two that people don't realize is after many buildings fall and you know more but the person who seems to know less is prospering more than you then you get angry at God because you know so much and you have so little that is the cane trap check your heart the cane trap is this you knew what was good to do because God tells Cain if you do right if you do well will you not be accepted Cain refused to do what reigned in his heart. Jealousy, anger. Listen, you know you need to understand Cain. If we want to give her a gift, okay? Come, we give her a gift, right? Has uh, come, we are gifting you. Yeah? Senor. So now, I know Hez is thirsty, so he needs water. Caro also knows Hez is thirsty, he needs water. Then we present a gift. See, I knew he needs water, so I did the right thing and I gave him water. He'll be very... She gives him a phone. It's more expensive, you see? Now, that is the cane problem. But first, let's, let's pause. Why is Cain not angry at God? Why is he not angry at God? Cain. Because who? We are letter gift yake. Min me letter yangu. See, the person refusing to accept the gift is the wrong person. You don't go like, why did you bring a better gift then? But why is Cain then angry at his brother? You can see it.
the elder brother and the prodigal son. The elder brother knew what was right to do. Right? Cain knew what was right to do. His lack of acceptance from the father caused Cain to kill the brother. So what happens when you know and you don't act? Become a murderer. How do you become a murderer? You kill anyone who is succeeding when you keep falling. It would, be, it would have been better if you never had. Okay. When you want to say something. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You feel you feel like that's that's my that's my thing. But you have refused. Right? What did the father tell the the elder son? All these things of mine are yours. But how are they accessed? They are accessed when truth is turned into a walk. You get. So if you ignore truth and walk only in spirit, you walk in deception. If you have truth and not walk that truth in spirit, what happens? you end up in frustration. So there's deception and frustration. If you want to know the most frustrated people are the people who know a lot of the Bible and they are broke. Oh, those people are angry. Oh, those people are jealous. Mimi, I had someone come to my house and that time, I swear to God, we had a 21-inch TV, 21-inch. 21-inch is a laptop screen. Kama? Yeah, kaka ka, 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 ka posta pale. Eh. 21 inches. Angry woman walks into my house having eaten meat I have provided and asks me whether it is proper for me as a preacher to have a TV. Why are you living in such luxury? I'm thinking, guy, 21, 20. Una je 21 my friend. My friend kila mtu mkiwatch macho mbili hivi mnachaza kila mtu afunge macho moja ndio mtoshe kwach your screen. Huh? But because she had spent years learning but never doing she was angry and jealous at what God was doing however small in my life. It still happens today. Anytime a Christian stops doing what God told them to do, the next port of call is jealousy and anger at your brother. Check your heart. And now you understand why some people stop being friends with you the moment you bought a car. Uh, like unashanga hey, we used to talk what happened jealousy okay now i've given truth and i've given spirit but remember both of these experiences are what then show you the father <laughs> So let me let me let me try. Can I try? I might give up. She does it time. She does Do we have space in our stomachs for more? <laughs> That's a dog. <laughs> Listen. God is 
sought after. Right? So let me explain the process of seeking. The process of seeking is not, is not delving blindly into spirituality. Okay? Why? What do we usually do? When people say they are seeking God, what do they do? I'm not going to go to work. I will go fast in a mountain, listen to songs, I read the Bible end to end, then I'll find God. Right? Is that the description that Jesus gave? Remember, if it is prayer, the correct position is to pray without ceasing. So prayer is a constant. It is not a tool for seeking. I'm not saying it's not used in seeking, but it is not the tool for seeking. Correct? Because, my dear friends, if you were to take script, uh, prayer and just pray, you can be answered anyhow. Correct? Now, if on the other hand, you decide to just read the Bible from cover to cover, you will just have knowledge, be puffed up, but be unable to apply it. That's the other problem with too much biblical knowledge without spirit. You know so much you can't apply it. Right? But in your interaction with the Holy Spirit and with Christ, right? Seek him in spirit and in truth. You meet the Father. Uh. Okay. So let me pause, rewind, and play. I said last week, the purpose of man, and the other week, last week was a function of man. I told you the purpose of man, the predestiny of man is to be conformed to the image of the son who is in the image of the father. Correct? Good. Now, if my destiny, the reason why God made me, is to be like him, and he is concealed, how then can I be like him? The only way I can be like him is if the spirit and the truth mold me to be like him. Okay? So, how do you seek God? Seek him and you will find him. Knock and it shall be opened. Question, where do we seek him? It says, seek me and you will. So, where do we find him? Obedience? Huh? Let me explain how you find God. The process of finding God is when what you believed is proved and it becomes truth to you. When what you had, what you were empowered to do, when it is achieved, okay, let me give you an example. Who's ever been sick and was healed by the Spirit of God? Anybody who's ever been sick and healed? Yeah, I'm looking at you guys. Some of you have been there. Any, many. Ruka Kipetero Kiesu. Okay, at least Agnes has been healed. Eh? You dear. Hey, but then na, na shanga and people are looking. Omeruka yes, <laughs> but it's okay. Two people is nice. Me have experienced it in my life. If you've not, please do. Right? For you, God, you stop believing God is a healer. You know He's a healer. Do you see the translation? What is understood by faith? 
when the spirit and the truth work, what is manifested is knowledge. And that's how you see God. I, okay. should, should I? Am I making sense? Okay. When you wanted to prove an acid in chemistry, and I know some of you are told you are metals, matter it is not an emotional engagement it is not how you feel uh, there is no one in the bible who said i feel god is here ah 
my God, my God, he's here, he's here. Is that how Samson or David experienced God? What was the experience of God? Look at Daniel. Daniel says, I was studying the scriptures and I understood. And I decided to seek God on this. It was intellectual. Correct? He walks a journey with God. Correct? To the point where God, when he is answering him, tells him, Daniel, all favored of that means that revelation did not come without the walk. If you get <laughs> revelation without walking in truth, walking with God, you're in trouble. Are, are we together? Now, this connection between truth and spirit revealed God's mind. Correct? I want to put it to you that the image of God is built in us. Now, if you want to understand how all things work together for good, is if you want to understand what God is saying accurately and where you need to work to succeed accurately, you must be able to do two things. Number one, you must be able to interact with the truth. So, the truth will tell you we are going this way. The Spirit of God will supercharge, energize, walk with you, strengthen you, encourage you to walk the path. When you arrive, your eyes will be opened to a new dimension of God. But don't you sing Umbali to Metoka to Nasemani Ebenezer, right? The God who enables me. Correct? So, how did that journey begin? Leave Egypt. They obeyed. They were walking what? Under a cloud, under a pillar of fire. They followed the direction that the cloud and the fire sent them. Correct? When they followed this direction, when they arrived, they said, we know a dimension of God. It is called Ebenezer, the God who enables me. Are, are we together? I'm, I'm trying to teach you proper seeking of God. Right? You see, uh, let me put it another perspective. How many people, in fact, now let me throw the question back at you. How many people know that Jesus is a healer? Hands up. Everybody. How many walk in the healing of Jesus? Eh, uh, has Apakule. Uh, any you guys here? Since I'm failing as a teacher, by the way, F. F. Now, what is the problem? thing is, you are here practicing knowledge. I know God is. But you have not met with the Spirit of God to reveal to you in your inner being. Now, the re you see, the knowledge everyone can have, the intimate understanding, the revelation of Christ the healer comes by the Holy Spirit. Now, when the Holy Spirit is working in you, and he delivers you from illness, then you will know that God is a... Until then, what do you know? Panadol is a healer. Dr. Karanja is a healer. But God, you don't know. So when you seek him, let me make it very practical. You see, if you want God to heal you, you must seek to understand the healer. Okay? When you understand the healer, you must seek to walk with the spirit of the healer. Are we together? Hey. 
guys are making me feel like I'm wasting time, Buan. Like I'm speaking to rocks. <laughs> okay, let me try again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Let me make use a topic you guys like. And perhaps we should speak about. It is God who gives you the ability to create. Who wants to be wealthy? Uh, everybody. Okay. Can God make you wealthy? Somebody say amen. Yeah, good. So, you want to meet God, the wealth maker. Right? Now, many people go to church, sow a seed. Okay? They open their wallets, chuck a note, sow a seed. Right? And then expect miraculously that God will make them wealthy. Correct? Is that what it says? See, it says, give and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, rolling over. Shall men give into your bosom? Men, not God. Because in the entire history of the Bible, no one has received a bag of cash in his bed after he gave Karo a thousand. Right? One is a jaribu. But here's the difference between the actual application of the truth and the half application of truth people know. You want to have a spiritual experience, mostly an emotional one, that makes you give a thousand dollars, a thousand shillings. Then you expect without any truth revelation understanding that that spiritual act will translate to physical reality. Okay? Then what happens is you get frustrated because your money has not come back. True or false? Okay. But the Bible starts talking of business and it says for as long as the earth remains so shall seed time and okay so what does that mean it means that there is a process if your money is truly seed there is a place called earth because for as long as the earth remains, so shall seed time and so is seed for heaven or earth. So when the preacher says you should sow a seed, do you sow it in the heavenly kingdom or you sow it on earth? Ah, okay. <laughs> That's where the church draws the line. Okay, let me try again. He gives bread to the eater and seed to the Okay. Bread is for those who are hungry to hungry to eat. Seed is for those who want to do business to harvest. Okay? Now, if you do not understand the principle that if you've got a thousand shillings and someone tells you to plow a seed, you cannot take earthly seed to plant into heavenly things. In fact, in heaven it says, store your riches. Seed is sown on earth. See, the talents, the guy with the five talents, did he even pay tithe on his five talents? Or the guy with the two, did he give 20 cents to the priest? Did he? He went and did business. Hey, you think I'm saying mad things? Okay. Kingdom of God is like a man who went about sowing seed. On what? On the earth. 
some fell by the way by the whatever eh? and what fell on good soil produced 30 60 100 fold ah. Ah. so give and it will come back to you good measure press down shaken together shall men give it unto your bosom combine another scripture use unrighteous mammon to win friends so that they will let you into their everlasting habitations. Aha. Uh -huh. So what should I use money to do? Ah, okay. Do you know what friends are? Let me give you the names of friends. I, friend one is called investor. Friend two is called customer. Friend three is called client. Friend four is called HR manager. Friend five is called What I'm simply saying, use money to attain the greatest resource this earth has, human resource. It is humans who invest in your business. No one on earth has Jesus Christ as a shareholder in any of their companies. Kuna? It is men. There is no one who has Jesus as an employee, head cooker, silent listener at every company meeting? No. To understand God the wealth giver, you've got to understand his relationship with Mammon, walk in the spirit in obedience to what he told you, then you will know the God who makes you wealthy. Oh God. What I'm simply saying is if you want to seek God, this is how he sought on any matter. I've just given you. Let me in fact continue with Mammon because I'm fungwaring some of your brains. You see, money, wealth, has rules it follows. Correct? The reason you are poor is because you don't understand wealth. Fact. Okay? When you don't understand wealth, it does not matter how many things you do spiritually. It doesn't matter. Because even if God was to give license and say, this son of mine has been so faithful, I have blessed him. But if you have no knowledge in that sector within which you have been blessed, the same Bible demands that you must perish. Because you lack Yeah. Am I making sense? So, for you to become a king, like your father who's a king, you must search out a matter. CJ, am I making sense? Okay. Am I wasting your time? Okay. I'm just checking. Because I am at pains for you to understand this. What can I use as another example? Let's say you want a husband or a wife. <laughs> From Nairobi. Uh, uh, you see, this is the problem. Uh, from of having too much knowledge from social media. And I said experience is not a good doctrine teacher. Experience is not. No, because, listen, and, and this is the thing with experience. Remember there were professional fishermen fishing. And they had fished all night. And then Jesus tells them, listen, just cast the note 
on the other side of the boat. It was not a scientific thing. He did not tell them change the net, change the lures, flash lights. He told them simply cast the net on the other side of the boat. Right? Ati? You'll go fall. Yeah, because <laughs> yes, atu menua shamba apa, sasa nunua apa next. Doesn't make sense, right? But Here's the issue. If you want to know how to get a husband, you must ask who is the OG husband? God. Right? If you want to survive with your husband, good or bad husband, you must understand the relationship of God as a husband to his wife. If you don't understand that, then you're who doing spiritual gymnastics, fasting, praying, makeup, eyeliner, booty. All of that will not give you because you do not uh, uh, let me tell you the most dangerous thing you did the most dangerous thing you did is when you got saved you changed kingdoms you changed kingdoms you see there is a world system and how it works and how it delivers results but there is a kingdom system and how it works now a lot of us want to be in the kingdom but apply worldly. You get? That's why you find it very hard to move because this is your posture. Very hard to move. If you're going to do anything in the kingdom, you must understand how the kingdom works. So how the kingdom works is if you want to understand husband and wife, Paul told you, I speak of a mystery. I speak of Christ and the church. Sasa, if he speaks of Christ and the church, for example, and you are a husband, first, the church is a very interesting person to wife. First, they have many lovers. If you read the bride of God, eh? Ahola and Aholiba, right? If you read about the bride of God through the ages, you're like, ay, paka kambia Hosea, ebu onja kidogo one vile utafil. Well, imagine, umenda, <laughs> when you Hosea, God ame kwambia, you marry that chick, you wake up, you go to another town, she's with another man, And then you're like, hey, you, 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 uh, come back. Hey, you know, the most interesting thing is people always have these lists of the kind of spouse you want. No, 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 no. Let me give you advice. There is nothing that will bring out the childishness and stupidity in you like marriage. It will bring out your jealousy, your spying nature, your anger, your 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 pettiness. Eh? Your yani marriage just brings out the worst in you. In you. Anyone who's married say amen. They know it's true. Marriage just any marriage is the only place when you have your best friend, you don't go around going, Ukona best friend mingine. Unam text hai, text best friend mingine. Marriage will will bring out the worst in you. What is the most important thing in marriage? Acceptance and forgiveness. Because that's what Christ did. 
forgave you past, present, and future. That's how he married you. Christ decided to die for your mistakes. Nani, when your spouse makes a mistake, it's you to fix it. As my son would say, will you fix it? When your spouse makes a mistake, it's you to fix it. So your prayer changes. From God change my spouse to God change me. So, eh, so you're asking God, but you have no knowledge. Am I, am I making sense? It applies in every principle of life. Now what happens? Do you notice, just from the marriage example, if you know the truth and the Holy Spirit empowers you, because when we talk about forgiveness of the kind of Hosea-like sins, you need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost empowers you. When that is done, you have seen an element of God. You are like God. Do you understand? This transformation is not God pulling strings and puppeteering. No. It is a well-designed process that what should happen. That as you go through life and you seek godly answers, the Holy Spirit empowering you, then you will become like God. Knowing what he knows, behaving like he behaves, having experiences the way he would deal with issues. Correct? Now here's the problem. That if you do not realize, if you do not understand or conceptualize that the reason why Christ taught above all else, he taught so much about faith, is this. That when you accept God, whatever instructions he gives you about how you should live your life require faith. They require faith. You are not going to do anything that God asked you to do without a leap of faith. It requires faith. There is nothing. Listen, if God tells you, <laughs> like he told me, Juicy, let's start an entrepreneur's fund. I'm like, entrepreneur's fund? So, so. And I was like, Jonah, I know Kenyans. They will write for me stupid proposals. And I assure you, I have received many. And I don't say that to offend someone. But ever since I made a post to receive business proposals, I have read some of those things and I'm thinking, Where? Lord, what have you thrown me into? But why is this important? <laughs> Any spiritual activity not backed up with understanding leads to frustration. So what did God desire for you to have? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Correct? Remember, hearing includes doing. Right? Now, what does that hearing entail? It entails instructions and, under and understanding. God, the Holy Spirit, does not move where there is no understanding, where there is confusion. God is not the author of confusion. The very thought that he is light tells you that he wants you to understand and comprehend. There is no such thing as blind faith. You made it up. Faith is not blind. Faith sees. Faith sees because we know it is the substance of things hoped for. Now how, how does this work? That you must interact with... You, you see, if, if you want God to heal you, Go to scripture and study healing. Right? Study it so much that you have understanding. When the Holy Spirit meets with you, he has enough water to produce something. 
So whatever it is you are seeking in God, how deep are you in the word? Most of us are too shallow. Anything in your life that is suffering, that has not experienced the power of God, is not because the Holy Spirit is unwilling or God is unwilling. It is because your knowledge and understanding is stuck. In fact, let me just give one more spanner in the works. Can I tell you the biggest problem we have? Biggest problem we have that keeps us from living in the word is accepting that I am the problem. You see, what you don't understand, and, and someone said this, and I want to repeat it here. Said, if you're broke at 18, it's your parents' fault. Okay? You're born poor. It's not your fault. When you're broke at 35, it is your fault. Why? Because it is showing clearly what is your ability to produce. Now the problem is this world has taught us that we are number one. Go to the mirror. Tell yourself you're a winner. You're a what? No. The Bible says the opposite. Every man should rate himself according to the measure of faith that he has been. Oh, what does that mean? The amount of revelation you have received tells you who you are. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So if I was to measure myself according to my faith, it is what I have had, what I know that tells me who I am. James said, the man who looks at the perfect law, law looks at himself in a mirror. And if you do not practice it, you have forgotten who you are. The thinking that you are okay, you do not need improvement, you do not have weaknesses, and when you're told your weaknesses, you get offended, is proof positive that truth will find very, a very hard time settling in you. There's always space to improve. Now, that truth, when it comes, listen, can I prove to you there is space to improve? Elon Musk is the richest man on earth. And that man has a lot to improve. Just look at his character. You realize, hi, they, there's a few things here that need panel beating, correct? So there's always things that need to be improved that the Holy Spirit empowers you to change so that you can meet a new dimension of the Father. So that's why these journeys are important. This is why the journeys to truth are important. And if you are not taking those journeys, I will tell you for free, you're not finding God. If you go to sing a song to find God, not that season anymore. If you want to do Bible guesswork, study and show yourself approved. Whatever you desire, whether it is to make money, which is the most basic request people have in the kingdom, or it's a stable marriage, a stable friendship, how to market your business, all of those things are in the Bible. If you do not understand how they work, it does not matter how much you pray, it will not work. Or has it worked so far? My friends, learn to seek God correctly. Be a king. Because, do you know why rulers in the kingdom of God are called judges? Do you know why? Anybody? Huh? Yeah. 
in fact let me let me translate what you've just said to judge the reason why it is equal as to rule is a judge is able to check the standard that god had set and look at what has been presented and ask themselves has this met the standard and if it has not they build it up to standard that is why the judgment of god is a scale you have been put on the scales and you've been found wanting the judgment of god is interesting it is not bad girl good girl bad boy good boy no 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 it is a scale now you must ask yourself what is put on this side of the scale what are you measured against what are you measured against that measure is what condemns you or frees you on that bombshell <laughs> 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 